Welcome to the presentation of RF Vision 1 Mini, part of the Spectrum on the Go family. The RF Vision 1 Mini records wideband RF spectrum from remote locations. It comes with the transmit capability as an option that allows for analog playback of RF signal. It's lightweight and battery operated and can be carried anywhere in the world for long duration recording. Includes DITA's high performance DITA 3290L tunable transceiver and the DITA 500 notebook for a continuous and sustained recording of over two and a half hours at the full 40 megahertz bandwidth. Built with dual conversion superhead transceiver design, it offers far superior performance than other spurious dominated zero IF transceivers available in the market. The RF preselection filters, the IF filters, all contribute for an 80 dB SFDR and the digitization is done with 16-bit ADC and DAX. It includes the SIGIN Spectre 1 standard GUI for spectrum monitoring, scanning and wideband recording. Some of the features listed here, 20 MHz to 6 GHz operation can be expanded from 1 MHz to 18 GHz, 8 dB noise figure, 93 dB gain control, and 80 dB of SFDR. 16-bit converters are used and allows for programmable DDC bandwidth. Real-time recording of 40 MHz bandwidth and the SIGIN Spectre 1 software is there for command and control. Optionally, battery operation is possible and optional RF output for RF playback and long duration arbitrary waveform generation. Some of the applications listed here, spectrum monitoring and collection, RF record and rebroadcast, signal intelligence, portable radar, wireless comms, algorithm development using real-world signals, RF transmit, RF test, RF simulation and training, and many others. In short, it offers the portability without any compromise. Just before we move on to our demonstration setup, a brief picture of what the demonstration setup looks like. The 3290L is shown on the left, connected to the DITA 500 notebook. The RF input would be down converted to 75 megahertz and sampled at 100 megahertz with 16-bit ADCs. The FPGA will perform the digital down conversion and the resultant IQ data would be recorded in the notebook with six cores and up to two terabyte of storage. So we have connected to the unit and that brought us to the configuration screen. There are two modes of operation. One is the SIG inspector mode, which is the frequency scanning mode, and the other is the stair mode. So when operating in the scanning mode, we will see a waterfall for the entire frequency of operation, 20 MHz to 6 GHz. We will also see the threshold power display lists the frequency that has crossed the power threshold. The same information is at the bottom. Clicking on a single point in the waterfall brings up the spectral display of a 40 MHz bandwidth around the tuning frequency. From here we can go into the recording mode very easily. All we have to do is type in a session name and in the recording session we can have a choice of manual, by duration or by size. We can also type in some text field here to denote our comments. To start the recording we have to press the record button here and that brings us to the FFT display of the recording and in the bottom we'll see the duration of the recording that has elapsed and the total available space left on the recorder. On the top are some of our display controls. We can put in a max hold that holds the frequency, holds the maximum value of the received signal. We can choose our windows and once we are done with that we can stop the recording. We can also record the signal in the stair mode and in that case, we simply type in the actual frequency where we want to tune. And we get to the same recording screen. And again, if we want to record, we type the same information and we click the button and the recording starts. During recording we also see uh, the status display on the left and the 
bar on the bottom that shows the duration. The library view shows the user all the sessions that have been recorded. Selecting, uh, clicking on a specific session and clicking the info button brings up more information on the session. The user can also use this panel to transfer files over to his computer. Again, select the session, click the transfer button. That brings up the remote computer into which you want to transfer the file and hit the OK button. This is also the view which is useful to play back the signals, the analog playback if the equipment is so equipped with. Again, select the session and click the play button or click the playback tab on the top that brings up an advanced playback options. One of the important advanced playback options is the enable loopback that allows the file to be played out indefinitely. The other advantage of the RF Vision Mini is the local processing capability. Since the unit is supplied with a Windows virtual machine, this allows users to install their own processing programs and directly process the recorded data without moving the data over to another machine. As an example, we show here a simple display program that displays the recorded signal. And users can, for example, write their own MATLAB code and process it in situ.